We are into the interesting area that's Davison and Germer experiments. So here is the index of uh, Davison Germer experiment with the scattered electrons with the angle of a scattering theta. And we are going to talk about the electron diffraction followed by the wave nature of electrons and the de Broglie relation. Let's go on. So these people are Davison and Germer and he is Thompson. The wave nature of electron was the first experimentally verified by the great physicist C.J. Davison and L.H. Germer in the year of 1927 and independently by G.P. Thompson in 1928 who observed the diffraction effects with the beams of electrons scattered by the crystal. You are able to see this crystal is diffracting the electrons. This is referred to as crystal diffraction. Davison and Thompson shared the Nobel Prize in 1937 for their experimental discovery of diffraction of electrons by the usage of crystals. So here is the experimental arrangement used by Davison and Germer and it is shown here. It consists of an electron gun which comprises of a tungsten filament F. Here is the one which is coated with a barium oxide and it is heated by a low voltage power supply LT. The electrons emitted by the filament are accelerated to a desired voltage by applying potential or voltage from a high voltage power supply. They are made to pass through a cylinder with a fine holes along its axis producing a fine collimated beam. The beam is made to fall on the surface of a nickel target or nickel crystal. So the electrons are scattered in all direction by the atoms of the crystal. The intensity of the electron beam scattered in a given direction is measured by the electron detector that's referred to as collector. The detector can be moved on a circular scale and it is connected to a sensitive galvanometer which records the current. So the deflection of the galvanometer is a proportional to the intensity of the electron beam entering the collector. The apparatus is enclosed in an evacuated vacuum chamber. By moving the detector on the circular scale at different positions, the intensity of the scattered electron beam is measured for different values of angle of scattering, theta which is the angle between the incident and the scattered electron beams. By moving the detector on this circular scale at different positions the intensity of the scattered electron beam is measured for different velocities and for different values of the angle of scattering theta which is the angle between the incident and the scattered electron beams. So the variation of uh, the intensity I of the scattered electron with the angle of scattering theta is obtained for different accelerating voltages. The experiment was verified and performed by varying the accelerating voltage from 44 volt to 68 volt. And it was noticed that a strong peak appeared in the intensity I of the scattered electron for an accelerating voltage of 54 volt at a scattering angle of theta is equal to 50 degree. The appearance of the peak in a particular direction is due to the constructive interference of electrons scattered from different layers of the regular space atoms of the crystal. So, from the electron diffractions, you are able to measure the wavelength of matter waves are found to be 0.165 nanometer. The deep probable wavelength lambda associated with the electron B is equal to 54 is given by lambda is equal to H by P. 
So over here, H is the Planck's constant and P is the momentum of the particle and lambda is the wavelength of the particle. So replacing your H with the values, you will be getting 1.227 divided by root V nanometer. It's nothing but replacing your V with the 54, you will be getting lambda is equal to 0.167 nanometer. Thus, there is an external agreement between the theoretical value and the experimental obtained value of de Broglie wavelengths. So, Davison and Germer experiment that strikingly confirms the wave nature of the electrons and the de Broglie relation. So, this is how the relation is lambda is equal to h by p. So in 1989, the wave nature of a beam of electrons was experimentally demonstrated with a double slit experiment. This is your double slit. You are able to see the double slit experiment, similar to the use of the wave nature of light. Also in an experiment which is done in the year of 1994, the interferon fringes were obtained with a beam of iodium molecules which are about a million times more massive than the electrons. So the de Broglie hypothesis has been basic to the development of modern quantum physics and mechanics. It has also led to the field of electron optics. So the wave properties of the electrons have been utilized in the design of electron microscope which is a greatest improvement with a higher resolution over the optical microscopes.